Okay, welcome back, dear viewers. Uh, as I have completed Tower of the Stargazer and my Lamentations of Elemental Evil campaign, it is time for me to review it and let you know what I think about this uh, adventure. Uh, before I begin, though, I do want to uh, give a sh quick shout out to everyone who subscribed in the past few months. I've uh, been doing this in less than a year. I started in August 2022, and I'm almost at 300. I really appreciate it. Um, I hope you're getting something out of these. If you're new to the channel, uh, what I do is I have actual plays of me playing the games that I want to play, that, I w uh, that I'm interested in. I show you what I'm doing with them. Uh, through the actual plays, and then I will review them. Nothing against the flip-through review, uh, but it's been my experience that uh, what you read and what gets translated to the tabletop during gameplay isn't always congruent. Uh, so sometimes what looks cool might not be cool, uh, and what something that doesn't look cool could actually be a lot of fun, and that's what this is about. I want to let you know if I had any fun with this, if that these modules and, and I want to show you um, uh, so you can make an informed decision with your hard-earned dollars uh, that being said um, I really appreciate everyone sticking with me this is I'm I'm new to this whole video making thing and uh, every time I have a hiccup I learn something new and it's it's been slow going but I do appreciate everyone sticking with me so anyway this sort of thing is your thing Hit like and subscribe and the bell icon, and uh, I do appreciate it. All right, so let's get started. A little, little background music, music I was using for the actual play. So Tower of the Stargazer by James Edward Raji the Fourth uh, is one of the earlier offerings from Lamentations of the Flame Princess, um, and uh, I think it is a great intro to what... Lamentations of the Flame Princess has to offer. So let me kind of walk through uh, the module uh, and the review of it. Um, essentially, it's just in the tower assault on a mad wizard's tower. Pretty straightforward premise. Um, a few interesting tidbits. There's this raging perpetual storm going on over the top of the tower. Uh, the tower itself is full of deadly traps, of interesting and horrific creatures, and monster encounters, and then there's a ton of loot uh, if for the players who are persistent and able to find it. Um, this is one of the earlier offerings, uh, and so it has a more classic, I guess, fantasy feel to it, you know, dwarf elf halfling whereas in the more contemporary stuff from lamentation of the flame princess the default setting is that 17th century europe um, so uh, so there's that too this can fit pretty much anywhere uh, uh, the module also kind of contains some commentary sidebar from uh, james himself kind of explaining why he's doing what he's doing and uh it's a good intro module for young referees as well. Um, so what is the background? So yeah, you have this ambitious wizard that built himself a tower to view the stars, you know, hence the stargazer, right? He uh, became obsessed with outer space and wanted to travel there. His obsession grew and he became murderous and cruel and started experimenting on ways to protect him and contain himself while traveling the stars uh, but then his head servant decided to do something and uh, the wizard became trapped um, in a magic circle thus leaving the tower sort of inactive and, long, and time has passed and people kind of forgot about the wizard uh, it's a pretty standard adventure hooks uh, for your camp Pains, you know, rumors from the locals about weird weather in a particular area on your game map. Uh, you can overhear gossip from rival adventurers about the tower and its location, um, or you can just stumble upon it. I did a little mixture of one and three in my Lamentations of Elemental Evil campaign. Um, those players don't like hanging out at the inn for some reason. 
so they don't get a lot of rumors. <laughs> so uh, they, they heard of something, uh, and on their way north, they saw it and decided to investigate. And that's what kind of kicked off this module in my actual play. What I found interesting during gameplay, and it didn't leap out at me when I read it the first couple of times, but during gameplay, it became very apparent how well crafted the adventure location is when you think of a tower it seems to be it's going to be pretty linear you're just going to go up to level one level two level three it's not like a dungeon which can be sprawling with different stairs and, and pits and various places to go to different levels at different parts of the dungeon the tower is pretty static uh, the guard tower in the village of Hamlin is an excellent example of how static it is. Um, I almost wonder why it was actually mapped out in um, the village of Hamlet slash um, Temple of Elemental Evil because it's literally just a series of concentric circles with stairs, right? And, and then the locations are numbered with who's in it in those rooms, right? Uh, here in Tower of the Stargazer, once the players discover room 13 on this map here uh it's an elevator and that allows them to travel to different parts of the tower in any order they choose i think that's pretty brilliant um certainly could uh raji have used like teleportation circles absolutely uh, but uh, the use of like a mechanical elevator sort of uh, heightened the theme of module of the stargazer so it's like this magic meets mechanics and science mix going on with the theme and i really liked it i it added like this mystique to the tower and uh and uh, kind of gave the players some food for thought while they used it to adventure around and find stuff uh, in the tower uh there aren't too many monsters uh, in this tower However, they are interesting and horrific, uh, which kind of play up and clue the players in on the terrible nature of the tower's owner. Um, I mean, the players are going to be fighting living blood, living entrails, and some desperate ghosts. Uh, at one point, there's like a stone spider that comes from the Underdark, well, the equivalent of Underdark, I guess. Uh, and that's like the closest thing they're going to get to a standard encounter. Uh, the creatures themselves uh, are pretty tough, or they can be tough if, if they get the drop on the players. I know one character picked up six vials of blood. Uh, I was just waiting for him to trip and fall so the vials would break, and then he'd be essentially slaughtered by living blood. Uh, so it was interesting uh, what the players could encounter in terms of monsters. Um, and again... Uh, that theme of like this wizard trying to understand the cosmos and he's just experimenting on all these terrible on all these people and uh, the sort of if you'll excuse the expression the afterbirth of those uh, uh, experiments uh, have proved to be pretty pretty challenging potentially fatal and uh, clueless players uh, won't won't put two and two together uh, my players <laughs> were seeing things pretty early and knew uh, something wasn't quite right with the tower itself. Um, traps is where this module shines. I have not seen so many cool and unique traps in my life. Um, uh, that seems to be the standard with Lamentations of the Flame Princess. Some really unique and clever ways to trick and trap uh, and potentially murder <laughs> players. Uh, and uh, this is a great primer on how to sort of be inventive. Uh, I mean, I think we've all played those games where, you know, you're going down a dungeon corridor and you come upon a door and this like this standard, you know, I guess procedure, the, the thief comes forward, he rolls to see if there's any traps, he tries to, you know, get rid of the whatever trap is the poison needle or whatever, right? And then you move on, and traps become pretty mundane 
and lame and not at all fun to, to run. Uh, admittedly, trap design is not as one of my strong suits. Uh, after reading Tower of the Stargazer, I sort of feel like I have a better grasp on how to do traps properly with OSR play. Um, uh, you know, there are warnings and clues. I think that's a big one. Uh, I think Questing Beast has a video from a few years back where he talks about this. Uh, I think it's a that's a big big thing to do especially if you're going to do some really intricate trap that's going to require more than just a die roll to surpass um and uh tower of the stargazer is chock full of stuff like that um some of the traps however are a bit intricate um, i don't want to get into s too many specifics here because i don't want to give away you know everything uh but um one trap in particular uh, which I'll mention a little bit later uh, I had read through but I didn't really conceptualize in my brain such that when the player started actually you know interacting with it I realized oh crap I didn't fully understand how this works uh, so there was some you know <laughs> there was a few awkward pauses as I was sort of like quickly skimming the text and, and then had a, oh this is how it works kind of thing. Um, there's like one or two of, of that in this module. Um, and then I'm going to talk a little bit about this later, but I'm going to coin a phrase here. The Ragian Psychological Method of Module Design. That's the Tower of the Stargazer is like a great example of this concept, which I'll talk to in a minute. Talk about in a minute. So um, the first traps encountered set the stage for what this module is going to be about um, and I have a map of the first floor okay the uh, the outside and the first floor um, you have these lightning rods those that's number one a body that's number two and then these stairs going up to these double doors okay uh, the double doors have knockers but there's also these doorknobs that are in the shape of snakes okay so there's your clues of what is could possibly happen as you head towards the tower and climb the stairs and, and try to open the door okay um, this these traps also demonstrate I think a classic way of designing and setting up players uh, for OSR play it's lethal but again you have these clues don't get attached to a piece of paper sitting in front of you you know uh, don't be reckless think about these things and try to reason through you might get it wrong but in getting it wrong you might get lucky and avoid the trap you know um, the later traps in this module are a little more subtle and really require the players to sort of build off of what they've experienced already to just sort of have a level of paranoia before stumbling into something um, and they sort of play off each other a bit there's something there's a two trap rooms in the basement for example that once you realize one of them's fake you should realize the other one's fake um, and going to cause you problems, you know. Um, the traps are very inventive, um, and I think the their lethality and weirdness and inventiveness really introduced players and referees to what it is to play Lamentations of the Flame Princess. Um, the players will be tricked and mutated. They'll be attacked by living organs. Uh, they'll be given red herrings uh, to further sort of undermine their confidence as players as they make their way through, you know, the tower and create confusion as they move about the tower. Like, what is going on? How do these pieces fit? Do they fit? Um, it's a wonderful way of using fog of war uh, all wrapped up into how these traps and encounters work together. Uh, it's, it's quite nice. Did want to mention Sir Revelon Calcidius himself. Um, I think we run into a trope of you know there's got to be a boss fight uh, in your adventure module. Uh, this does not have a boss fight. Uh, Calcidius should not be a boss fight. Uh, this is properly a trap, and James says so in the module. Uh, if he is freed, he's going to lead to a TPK. And if you're playing 
an ongoing campaign, uh, Revelon and Calcidius will be freed and terrorize your game world. Um, I think this is one of the more inventive traps. I've never really thought of using a magic user this way uh, because I started lying to my players. Just every time they talked to them, I would just lie. I just lie. And that added to the confusion and doubt they have about what to do in the tower. And I think it kind of drove some of them a little nutty uh, as they were trying to figure out what to do. Um, Calcidius is a wonderful, wonderful NPC and a great trap. Uh, those of you who have been watching my actual play, the players freed him, and things kind of took a turn for the worse for the players uh, at that point. All right, so what do I mean by the Ragian psychological method of module design? Well, it starts with the premise I... Uh, provided one of my earlier videos about Lamentations of the Flame Princess, generally speaking, as a rule set, and how character classes and the, the game design itself centers around what it is to be an adventurer. Okay, quick review. Uh, adventuring is a job, so once the players take on the role of an adventurer, there are skills they need. They need to know how to fight. They need to know how to tinker around with blocks and traps. They need to know how to sneak around. They need to have some understanding of magic and uh, religion uh, as they're going to be diving into these like long-forgotten places. And then the roles they play uh, highlight and um, sort of uh, specialize in those things they need to know about. So the fighter specializes in fighting. That's why he gets all the bonuses to hit. The specialist specializes in all these other skills, so on and so forth. And I, LOTFP understands adventurers. I submit to you that part of this understanding is also part of a deeper understanding of what it is the players are doing uh, as adventurers. Okay, The adventurers are an extension of players playing a game. Players like to get points, whether it's, you know, playing an old, you know, arcade game, they want to get the highest points, right? Playing D&D &D and Lamentations of the Flame Princess and all the retro clones, you want to get the most gold because that'll turn into experience points and that'll get your character more powerful. So players playing a game, they want more points, and James Ratchet knows this, and he knows they're going to get themselves into trouble out of sheer curiosity. And I think a lot of the traps <laughs> in Tower of the Stargazer are playing into that psychology perfectly. I've seen this in other modules I've read from Lamentations of the Flame Princess, some written by others, not just James, that sort of have this sort of idea in mind. So, you know, if you are designing your own uh, module or dungeon for your players, don't just consider... You know, the Gygaxian ecological method of, uh, game, you know, uh, dungeon design. And don't don't just consider, was it Jacquazing the dungeon, whatever. Also think about this, like how the players are going to interact with it. Because you could really screw with them and get them to do things that'll be fun. Because um, uh, it is fun to press the big red button and see what happens. And that's kind of what happened in my actual play of this uh, of this module. So there it is. I hope this catches on. The Ragian psychological method of module design. Um, take it for what it is, but that's what I believe is going on in spades uh, in this module. Alright, the $64,000 question. Do you pick up this module? And it's a resounding yes. It's like 6 bucks for the PDF. If you want uh, an anthology of early Lamentations stuff. I would recommend getting the Fire Anthology. I'd I don't know what it is in American dollars, but it's like 25 pounds or something like that. Uh, at the uh, web store, uh, you'll get four adventures, including Tower of the Stargazer, God That Crawls, which is interesting, Monolith from Beyond Space and Time, and Doom Cave, the Crystal Headed Children. Uh, well worth the money. Okay. This particular adventure is good primer on OSR play. It, it introduces the weird and horrific of lamentations to yourself and players. You can learn a thing or two about trap design from it, and most importantly, it is just fun to play. 
every every encounter had something interesting in it. Uh, so so there you have it. Pick it up. It's a no-brainer in my opinion. Um, okay, well, that's all I have. Nice, quick video for y'all. Again, if this is the kind of thing you like, hit like and subscribe, bell icon, yada, yada, yada. And uh, until next time, take it easy, everyone.